So a couple of weeks ago, I did my video about installing the extractor fan in the bathroom. And generally we've been pretty happy with it. It does remove a lot of the moisture from the bathroom and it's not too noisy or intrusive. However, when I was doing all the installation for this, there was one pretty important thing which I forgot, particularly if like us, your bathroom has no windows. Allow me to explain. So here's my little diagram that I showed in the previous video. And there's nothing inherently wrong with this. It is perfectly okay to connect your extractor fan to the lighting circuit. And it's also completely normal to use the return feed from the light switch to power the extractor switch and tell the extractor when to turn on and off. So if we neaten this up into a more diagrammatic form, we have something that looks a bit like this. This is exactly the same thing. We have our feed for the extractor power coming from the lighting circuit. And then we also have the live going into the light switch for the bathroom, which then powers the bathroom light and also the extractor switch so that the extractor can turn on when you turn on the bathroom light. But now let's imagine a specific scenario. Imagine that you are in the middle of your bathroom routine and suddenly the extractor fan starts making a terrible noise and white smoke starts pouring out of it and you need to turn it off as soon as possible. So the first thing you would think of doing is turning off the bathroom light, but of course that's not going to isolate the power to the extractor fan. All that's gonna do is turn off the switch feed. So the extractor fan is still gonna be running. So you run downstairs in your towel and you turn off the breaker for the upstairs lighting circuit. So that works, that will turn off the extractor and you can take a deep breath. But now you need to try and figure out what is actually wrong with it. And when you go upstairs, you realize that all of the lights are now off. And particularly your bathroom, which has no windows, is completely and utterly pitch black. So you could use a torch or try and find some kind of battery powered light so that you can then go in there and work on the extractor fan. But it would be so much easier if you could just turn on the bathroom light, but still have the power to the extractor completely isolated. So this is where this comes in. This is a three pole isolator and it's made specifically for use with extractor fans. And what this will do is it will isolate the live and the neutral which go to the extractor as well as the switch feed which comes from the light switch. So this means when this is in the off position, this extractor fan is completely isolated. All of the power to both the switch and the main power is off and you can now work on this safely and try and figure out whether you need to buy a new one or whether you can repair the one that is already there. The point being that the isolator is a very useful way of quickly being able to turn off the fan without having to isolate the entire lighting circuit. And crucially, you can still use your bathroom in the normal way and the light will still work as usual. So this is what's missing from my current installation and that's what I need to install now. But since I was doing that, I thought it might be worth trying to see if we could solve another problem at the same time. So as I mentioned in my previous video, we now have our brand new double glazed windows installed and they are really excellent. And um, they've got really good sealing around the edges and the glass is extremely well insulated. I mean, if you touch the inside of this glass, it's basically room temperature, even though it's pretty cold outside. So the house really does stay a lot warmer now, but having the windows closed all the time has introduced a new problem, and that is that the air doesn't really circulate very well upstairs. Downstairs things are a bit better because the front door gets opened and closed quite a lot, and also we have to leave the back door ajar at the moment so that the cats have some way to come in and out. But up here there isn't really a lot of airflow, and it has really started to get a little bit stuffy. The windows do have these trickle vents on them and they are pretty decent, you can feel the airflow running through them. So the risk of carbon monoxide poisoning or something terrible like that is pretty low. But it's not really enough airflow to cycle out all of the stale air that does tend to accumulate up here. What we ideally need is some kind of extraction system that extracts all the stale air and allows fresh air to flow in through the trickle vents. And funnily enough, right here in the middle of the upstairs area we have exactly that the bathroom extractor fan. So what would be really good is if we could leave the extractor fan running for an extended period of time, say during the day, and then turn it off at night when we want to sleep. Currently that's only possible if we leave the bathroom lights on, but that's obviously not an ideal solution. What we really need is some kind of additional switch somewhere which can control the extractor without turning on the bathroom lights. So I've been puzzling over this one for a while, trying to figure out a way to do this. Initially, I thought maybe we could just install another switch somewhere and then connect that up to the lighting circuit 
and then to the extractor switch feed. But the problem with this is as soon as you turn on the switch here, power is also going to flow back through this cable and the bathroom light is going to come on. So essentially what you've got here is two switches which just do exactly the same thing. I then wondered whether maybe I could put another switch here which would then isolate this bathroom light when you turn on this switch. But that is a real pain because then you have to turn on this switch and then also remember to turn off this switch and if you don't do things in the right combination then you end up with all sorts of weird unintended results. But then finally I had a brainwave and it was actually inspired by this two-way switch design which I talked about in one of my previous videos. And the interesting thing about this design is that the power actually runs the opposite way through the switch to how it would in a normal one-way switch design. In a one-way switch you would have the power coming in on this common terminal and then you would connect your light on one of these poles. But in a two-way switch the power actually runs in through one of the poles and then runs up and out of the common terminal. And that allows the switch to work in this quite interesting two-way design where you can turn on and off the switch from either side and have the light respond in the correct way. So if we apply a similar logic to my extractor circuit, we can arrive at this. So here we're still using a normal two-way switch, but what we're doing is we're running the feed that comes from the bathroom light into one of the poles, and then we're running another feed from the lighting circuit into the other pole. And then we're taking the feed out to the extractor switch from the common terminal. So in this design, when this switch is in the off position, everything will work as normal. The power will come through the light switch, turn on the bathroom light, and also then go up to this pole and up to the common terminal, and then down through and to the extractor switch. So when you turn on the bathroom light, the extractor will come on as usual. But when you turn the switch into the on position, now what you're doing is disconnecting the circuit that goes to the bathroom light, but what you're also doing is connecting a new circuit which comes from the lighting circuit up into this pole, out to the common terminal, and down, and turns on the extractor. So in this position, the extractor will turn on, but the bathroom light will remain off. So my plan is to install these switches here inside this cupboard here. Um, I'm probably gonna put them here, I think. Um, obviously this will eventually get removed and turned into a shower and when we do that then the switches can move up there onto the wall. But for now I think this is a good little spot to put them because they'll be out of the way but easy to access.
All right, so we're all done. And if we turn on the bathroom lights, nothing happens at the moment. And that is because the isolator is off. So if we turn that on, now the extractor comes on as normal. So now let's try it in bypass mode. So I'll just turn the isolator back on again. So at the moment, the fan is off. But if we put the switch into the bypass position, the light is still off, but the fan is on. Good times. So that's a good job done. The last thing I need to do is just label this switch. I'm gonna get a label maker and do that at some point, but uh, I don't have that just yet. But for now, everything's working. So that is job done. So next up, head over and watch that video because that's where I installed the extractor fan in the first place. Uh, there's a little playlist of stuff down there that you might like as well. And lastly, if you're still watching, then you're probably enjoying this content. So help me out and just hit that little subscribe button. It's good for you too. You get more content.